Before we get into the latest on the Bengals, are you happy with what the Bengals have done so far in NFL free agency? Why for yes you are, and for no you are not. One of the big areas that remains unadjusted, unfixed, unfilled in terms of the needs for Cincinnati is the right tackle spot. Makai Becton has been a name pretty heavily linked this off. He's in Cincinnati, which was amplified by their visit with him on Friday. However, he has not yet agreed to a contract with Cincinnati. Becton played a decent amount in 2023. He had battled injuries previously, and the results were not very good. And what's noteworthy to me about Becton in particular, I think he tends to play better when he's on the left side of the offensive line. That would not be the case in Cincinnati. He'd be a right tackle option. But of course, uh, he's known very well with Frank Pollock, who briefly coached him in New York. There's clearly interest there. Right tackle is, I would argue, this team's number one need, or at least the one A need. We'll get to one B here in a little bit. The other options are guys like Trent Brown, who we'll come back to more in depth here momentarily. Josh Jones. I don't think David Bakhtiari is going to be healthy. Yosh Neiman, Cam Fleming, Kendall Lamb, Jay Curran are all kind of more swing tackle options. Uh, DJ Humphreys will not be healthy in time for week one, which defeats the whole purpose. And I don't think Donovan Smith played that great. So in terms of your vet startable options on the right side, it's kind of Becton or Trent Brown. Sports Illustrated suggesting that idea, and I totally get it. Brown is a better player right now than Makai Becton is. Now, he also might want to be on the left side of the offensive line. There were some... Look, he, he, let's be honest, he kind of raised the stink in his final year in New England, said he was unhappy with some things, pointed out some things he didn't like. He might have been right, but uh, employers typically don't like it when they're hiring somebody who very publicly uh, was critical of the previous employee uh, employer as well. So that's something you got to kind of vet and figure out there. But I would say the duo of Brown and Brown at left tackle, right tackle, or Becton too, would make for one of the biggest offensive lines in the NFL. If you're looking for a stopgap option with, in theory, a draft pick, more on that in a little bit, I would argue Trent Brown makes more sense. I think that'd be a better signing for Cincinnati, but the money, the age, even the injuries for Trent Brown too, all things that have to be sorted out. So pick a right tackle of these two guys to sign. TB for Trent Brown, MB for Makai Becton. Go vote in the comments section. I will say this part too. Uh, I think the Bengals would love to draft a right tackle. In fact, I would argue that's probably their plan in this year's draft is to draft a right tackle to pair with somebody. So the old, to either start or replace early on as a rookie. The draft options then, I think the top guys break down like this. I would be surprised um, if Joe Alt, Olufashanu, or even Talise Fuaga fell to them in the middle of round one. I don't think that's a likely outcome. However, I think J.C. Latham could very well be there. And he does very much fit what the Bengals like in, in their offensive linemen. Amarius um, Mims, I will risk it all for him. And he, you can give him time or even maybe Tyler Guyton, but that's kind of like your nightmare scenario. Five tackles go off the board, and it's Troy Fatanu. Do you want to draft a center? You, so you want that veteran tackle in there. You want someone so that in the case of you know disaster knock on wood, it's not Cody Ford or Deontay Smith or Jackson Carmen or reaching massively to get a different uh, draft pick in round one in there, you can still take one of the top players on the board for you, but have that need solidified with a veteran stopgap if that guy needs time or whatever. So what is the percent chance you think the Bengals draft an offensive tackle in round one? Go ahead and sound off for me in the comments right now. I do want to check in on Tyre Tart as well as nose guard is the... 1B big need here of uh, the Bengals. He visited this week as well, but has not agreed to at this time. Now, Tarts was cut by Tennessee in 2023 due to some unhappiness with his playing time. Eventually joined the Texans to wrap up the season. Eight TFLs in total in 2023. He is, the, the body type might not suggest full-on nose guard, but that is what he is. 
I don't think it's going to be as expensive as I've seen some projections. I'd be shocked if it got $8 million. Now, with that said, the, D, the DT market has been a nightmare. Uh, the Bengals had to pay a premium to get Sheldon Rankins on this team because he was going to, the market just was out of control. Bad players are getting $7 million. So maybe Tart does command more uh, than what had been projected. But you want that DT in there, that nose guard. Rankins and Hill are going to man down the, the, the three technique spot. Even if it's only a two down player, you need to find a two down nose guard because I don't. It's not Zachary Carter. It's not Jates Taylor. Those guys aren't. Those guys aren't good enough. And the nose guard market is not very good. It's players like Jonathan Hankins and Sebastian Joseph Day who also got cut, and Austin Johnson and Mike Purcell and an old guy like Linval Joseph. The market is not very good. So you want to sign somebody? Maybe it's Ayer Tart. And I think day two, maybe a Tavondre Sweat and McKinley Jackson. Make a lot of sense for the Bengals as a draft pick. The next goal is 7,500 subscribers. So if you haven't already, hit that sub button for more Bengals YouTube videos. Finally, some conversation here on one Daxton Hill. The Bengals' decision to add two safeties who can start, I think, casts massive doubt over the future of Dax Hill. The raw numbers look pretty solid. A bunch of tackles, TFLs, sacks, interceptions, PBUs. Should have had more uh, interceptions. There is some ball hawking stuff. And there were some very frustrating, just completely blown assignments that can't happen. That he's, been, he's been in this defense for two years, put over 1,000 snaps. If they have to happen at the beginning of the year, okay. When they're happening in the final game of the season and the final games of the year, you, that's, that's a big issue. I think figuring out Daxton Hill's future is a key thing right now for this organization because I think there will be interest in him from other teams if, that end, if they don't want to make him a starter somewhere. So do you believe still in Dax Hill? I am not out on him, but I think you got to figure out what your plan is. We'll break down some of those options here, but A for yes, B for no in the comments. Now the safety room I think could look like this. You sign Geno Stone, there's your free safety. Because Von Bell got cut by Carolina, offset language, you're paying him the vet minimum. Super affordable for a box safety. So you could have Dax and Hill be safety three. Rotate in, do more multi-safety looks than Luan Rumo typically does. Uh, he maybe starts over Von Bell. Also makes Jordan Battle a backup. Now your safety room is actually kind of really good, by the way. You could try him at corner. Now, outside corner, I don't know if he's got the skill set. And I don't know if he, that, that's his role. I do think he's going to, I think he'd be a really good nickel. But you have Mike Hilton in there. And hell, maybe argue DJ Turner, Mike Hilton, and Dax Hill are all best at nickel corner. Strangely enough, a bunch of Michigan men in there. Um, so I don't, I, I don't know what the plan is for Dax Hill. Because I'm not benching Mike Hilton. He's too good. So I'm then sitting Daxton Hill for year three. He's like my super sub Swiss Army piece in the secondary. My tight end stopper, I'm not really maximizing that draft pick there. I don't, do I, do I try him on the outside? I don't, I don't know if he's going to be a good outside corner. So could the Bengals trade him? I don't know what his trade value would be. And I think you should be able to at least get a top 125-ish draft pick. Is that enough for a team that has a bunch of draft capital already? I think there, sh there could be some teams that are interested. I think for the Bengals internally, figure out where you want to play him. And if you are going to make him a backup, listen to trade offers. Because maybe what you could do is a player-for-player player deal. Because you need a defensive tackle. You, you need a nose guard. Maybe you can find one with a flip of Dax Hill. Not saying it's the best option, because I still believe in the kid. But you're trying to win games now. Maximizing your current roster is something you have to consider.